Hello again. All right, in this video I'm going to be tackling color and temperature of light and temperature of shadow. So uh, going back to digital water, I'm just going to glaze some color over the value study that I already have. Now in the value study, if you notice, there's no white and there's no black because I want the glaze to adhere to the lights and darks uh, they won't adhere to black or to white so you can see I'm playing with local color just going over with digital water digital water is a great comping tool once I have everything set um, for my color and composition then I rarely go back to digital water other than uh, glazing in some values or glazing in a little bit of color in shadow areas or to knock back hot spots in the image. Places that are too high key, I'll use digital water for that. But I rarely use digital water for detail. I find it absolutely phenomenal for uh, the blocking in process. Some people probably use it uh, a different way this is just um, how I use it in my workflow. So digital water is heavily used in the early stages of the composition. And here I'm just trying to set some color mood. So I just dried the digital water. Uh, and now I'm going back in with a little bit of cools, again with the new simple water brush to define some of my uh, shadow areas. And then I'll just uh, go to white take it back out where I don't want it. So just dry it again. And that's the important thing is that you you continue, continually dry the digital water uh, as you're working through it. So now I've kind of just gone bold and I've uh, glazed in a uh, over the entire canvas again with digital water. And now by taking the hue and going to white, I'm pulling back what's underneath. So again, I, I use the digital water as a layering tool. So I want the main light to be and the, the uh, warmer temperature and the saturation to be in this foreground area. Again, digital water, if you pull it a little bit more towards the gray on your color wheel, gray with a temperature, either warm or cool, it tends to desaturate areas that you want desaturated uh, and then as I erase back out using the white technically, um, uh, that's, uh, that's important. I'm back to the constructing brush here and I'm going to start pulling in some of my uh, reflected light. So I'm always playing contrasts, lights versus darks, warm versus cools. So on the back side of these trees, there's going to be uh, some uh, bounce light that I will uh, move in the cool. Um, spectrum. So I'm just now kind of playing with detail with the constructing brush. I have a few brushes that I use to block in the painting. Obviously I sketched it in with the scratch board tool. I uh, play with the, uh, the digital water early on in the painting in both the block in stage and the initial color glazing stage and then I uh, move around the painting. As you see, I build the painting up uh, in its entirety. Don't work in one particular area to get detailed. I try to lift the painting uh, all at once. And so my main brush is here been, again, to sketch uh, the scratch board tool, to glaze in my values. The digital water is, is great with that. To start playing with some of my edges in detail, I like the glazing constructing brush. Uh, and then the particle brush is nice to just kind of get some, some of the effects. So that's really all of the uh, tool sets that I'm using at this point. I am playing with some layer functions and things like that to enhance my values to so darken my darks and create a uh, greater contrast against the lights. It's usually in the detail stage as I move towards detail and texture that I start playing with a uh, different variety of brush. So here I'm back into the particle brush because it uh, it moves the paint in a way that uh, or it moves the pixels in a way that I really feel like it's kind of a scumbling type of brush back into constructing. As you see, 
pick just a few tools to get the painting uh, to a particular area. Right now I'm just I created a new layer and I'm just gonna go with some temperature of light so I'm trying to unify the light a little bit and now I'm gonna drop in some kind of some random colors just with the airbrush so I'm using the digital soft airbrush I'm playing with warms and cool creating kind of a space nebula and then I drop I it was on a separate layer so then I play again with layer functions if you look at your layer functions up there I made it a hard light so this is where I start to really kind of unify the temperatures uh, under a hard light just using the airbrush going a little bit darker at the top painting in just some uh, some color that will adhere to the local color and it's mostly for temperature